And now we're going to talk about what does the Bible say about friendship? Let's listen in. What does the Bible say about friendship? Let's explore how God views this powerful relationship because true friendship is more than just hanging out. First, the Bible shows us that friendship is a gift from God. In Proverbs 17:17 17, 17, it says, "A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity." A true friend is there through thick and thin, standing by your side no matter what. That's more than just a buddy, it's a blessing from above. Friendship is also about sharpening each other. Proverbs 27:17 tells us, "As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another." A good friend challenges you, pushes you to grow, and helps you become the person God created you to be. They don't just comfort you, they strengthen you. Loyalty is a hallmark of biblical friendship. In 1 Samuel 18:1-3, we see the deep bond between David and Jonathan. Their friendship was marked by loyalty even in the face of danger. True friends stick together no matter the circumstances. But it's not just about what you get. It's about what you give. John 15:13 says, "Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends." Jesus set the ultimate example of friendship, one that's selfless, sacrificial, and rooted in love. So what does the Bible say about friendship? It's a divine connection that goes beyond the surface. It's about love, loyalty, growth, and sacrifice. If you have a friend like this, cherish them, and more importantly, strive to be that kind of friend to others. Would you not say that is truly a blessing if you are blessed with a friend like that? I am just so fortunate that I do have uh, three good uh, confidants that friends, especially one, Teresa, she is like, what? She is definitely a godsend. And just like Proverbs 1770 says, it says that a friend, it loves you at all times. That's the kind of friendship we should be aiming for. One that sticks with you through thick and thin. And this girl have proven herself time and time again. It's not just about having fun together. It's about being there when life gets tough. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 and 10, it tells us that two are better than one. When you have a true friend by your side, you can lift each other up and you can tackle life's challenges together. We're not meant to go through this life alone. And let's not forget about honesty. That's another reason why me and my bestie, have been friends for so long because if it's one thing about us, we keep it real with each other respectfully. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6, you can trust what your friend says even when it hurts, but your enemies want to hurt you even when they act nice. So sometimes your friends, they may need to tell you the hard truth, but that's real love. It shows that they care enough to help you to grow. And then you look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, where it encourages us to do nothing out of selfish ambition. When you put your friend's needs before your own at times, that's when you really start to build that something special. And we got, let's not forget about Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, where it says, they bear one another's burdens. We already know how life can be. Life can be very heavy. But having a friend who helps you carry that load, that is priceless. So we have to keep in mind that true friendship is all about love, support, honesty, and selflessness. So if you can find yourself a friend like that, honey, hang on to that. I'm looking for that type of friend, but locally. Because my three besties, well, my main bestie, she's, uh, she doesn't live near me. And then my other one is in Florida and the other one is in the boogie down the Bronx. And I live here in Albany, New York. So I'm looking for two wonderful besties that I can, you know, make besties. And trust me, I'm very selective in terms of who I allow in my circle. So if you can find that baby, you have been truly, truly blessed. And now, my darling, it's time. How well do you know your Bible? You ready for that Bible challenge this morning? Let's go. Your first question, who pleaded with God to spare Sodom? Genesis chapter 18, verse 23 through 33. 
I was just thinking about that the other day. Just yesterday, I was wondering about that. Okay. Second question. What does Jesus ask us to do for the naked? Matthew chapter 25, verse 36 through 46. Next. In the story of the sheep and the goats, where does Jesus say the goats will be? Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 33. So there you have it, my beautiful diamonds, Hershey Kisses, and yes, my Teletubbies. I want you to go out there knowing how much you are so loved. You are so loved. I love you, but even greater love, greater love than mine could ever be, really, Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. They love you so much, and they forgive you. Today is a brand new day, a brand new start. Wipe the slate clean and get back out there and shine like the sparkling diamonds that God and Jesus Christ created you to be. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.